right, so Brittany's trying to rejoin. She called on her phone and she's now trying to connect with the computer. Um, Brittany, check your volume or your mic and see if that might work. Because I don't see anything. I'll just do it on my phone. I'm sorry. Okay. What's going on? I don't want to mess up here. Here's no, you're me. fine. I can see like two screens, but then there's only one with you. You know what I mean? The yeah, computer yeah, is saying, not letting me. Yeah, it said that my settings are, my microphone is muted. So I I don't want to mess it up though. So I'll just, I'll just do this. It's fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So, I mean, I think the best thing would be just for us to go through like each of the performance standards that are listed. Okay. And then like, have you had a chance to look over it or have you? Yes. Okay. I did. okay. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was a great lesson. Obviously, Thank like you. the lesson planning is fabulous. But then when the kids come in, it changes the whole <laughs> dynamic. Yes. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> But I did think it was a fun activity and it was something different. And they all seemed like excited. And you obviously, your patience level huh? is <laughs> phenomenal. I was like, oh my gosh, you were just like cool <laughs> and calm the entire time. And I was like, look at her. Like they are Thank not. You. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I was very impressed with that. Thank you so much. Yes. So um, one thing that I will say, um, we'll just start at the top. The professional knowledge, you obviously had a good grasp of all the content that um, you were trying to get the kids to understand and focus on and review. And then you constantly were able to explain to them, like Johnny on the spot, explain to them what they needed to do about the content or to redirect them to whatever they needed as far as the expectations were. Um, the second standard with the planning, like the only thing that I would say for this is possibly give the co-teacher a little bit more um, responsibility so that you, yeah. <laughs> and I get that. That's a tough, that's a tough thing to do because like when it's two adults, you know what I mean? Like you kind of, um, sometimes I think my co-teacher is supposed to know what to do automatically and then maybe they're thinking something else and just like even stating things that probably should be understood that aren't necessarily, you know, maybe you feel like she already knows or you feel like that's just the expectation. Um, Cause I've worked with two different co-teachers and one of them, like she and I just bounced off each other really well. And the other one needed me to say something specifically or it wouldn't get done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and, um, and I need to work on that. I've had two co-teachers as well um, while teaching. And um, the first one kind of just like fell to the back. It really was not like too present and put everything on me. The second one um, who was in the video, she has never taught social studies before. So they have just kind of like thrown her um, in there. And so right. she's still kind of just like, naturally falls back she'll do more of like um the best way i can describe it is assistant kind of stuff like i'll make copies and stuff like that but she kind of just let me um lead but yeah i would and especially since her her um caseload is in there right. i would i would like for her to be a little bit more you know hands on as opposed right. to me like managing like general the general oh, yeah. um, ed kids and then the right. SEC kids. It's, it's a lot. But yes, that's you're you're very right about that. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And I mean, like and it's really hard when you only have them for that many minutes to get yeah. all the instruction out. You know, it's like it it almost has to be like perfect for it to go the way that you envision it, you know? Right. Yeah. So right. like, that's the only thing I would say, but that definitely takes time. Like that relationship and that flow definitely takes time to develop. So as long as you're just like communicating with her and letting her know, like even say, okay, this is the activity I want to do with my gen ed kids. Can you adapt this for your group? You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. We so kind of come up with the idea for the lesson, but then she has to modify it for those kids because she works with them 
more directly. So then yeah. she's going to know their strengths and weaknesses and where to like jump in or whether to let them like, you know, fly on their own. Okay. And that's a great point because, and I don't know, um, just kind of like a sidebar, but still on track. I, I'm teaching eighth grade now. I'm, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> was like, right. So I'm teaching eighth grade, but I still have a co-teacher who in eighth grade, you know, is Georgia studies. So she's right. from like, Montana and so she has no idea about Georgia studies so um I'm gonna I'm I know I have to record again so um with her class I'm gonna try to implement uh because she still kind of like falls to right. the back as well because she doesn't right. they don't know the content right and, right you know she comes up to me like well where are we doing today and I'm just like I just got here two weeks ago <laughs> Right. I'll figure it out. So yeah, that that will definitely be able to be applied to my right. current situation now. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that that's something that I learned that worked for me just because like with those kids, like you it's so hard to be able to reach all of them in the spectrum yes. that you're trying to reach them in. So right. like that was one thing that we just decided I would kind of come up with the main lesson and then she would adapt it for those kids. And then that's how we were able to get all the content to them where they needed it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good plan. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. Performance standard three. And I'm going to get my charger real quick. Cause I don't want my phone to, cause I'm on my phone. I don't want it to die, but yes, I'm, I'm you go right ahead. You go okay. right ahead. Um, and I also thought too, with the different activities, just because I felt like the kids did need so much support that maybe if they could have both done like that same activity, kind of like what we were talking about, but then like the modifications were just adjusted based on the groups, Okay, but, you know, and like that maybe have been like a center rotation or something where they did the map activity, you know, however you want to structure it. I think it was the both activities were really well selected. Just I think that that overwhelmed you too much with trying to be able to like jump back and Go forth. Go back and forth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Different sets of directions. So to, to keep your sanity, right? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you still got to be able to function too. So that's really important. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> four. And this kind of goes along with that, but it just talks about the scaffolding of all of those different things. And because you know those kids, like you know the ones that can completely do the assignment, but just are not wanting to do the assignment. Yes, and I have a lot of that. Um, even with like my eighth graders now, what's cool with the eighth graders is that um, I taught them last year when I was oh, doing yeah. seventh grade. So I see that a lot where it's like I have to tell them like you, I know you can do this. Like I, right. I know your ability, but they right. just sit there like you know I don't feel like doing it. So it's trying to you know I think I need to um, I I guess beef up my assignments, and that's right. what I'm having um trouble with doing and trying to make it more interesting for everybody right right yes and that that is a very hard thing to do just because okay. like they're all coming in with like different levels of like background knowledge and then you know what I mean like who knows what happened that morning so there's so many different variables that you're dealing with and right. so one thing that um our science department does is they kind of have like a checklist of different things like pre-planned for the kids to do like different activities. And so then they can like, the kids can be working. And so each kid might be on a different part of that checklist. And, but the teachers know what all the different activities are. And so they can scaffold and help in the different areas and then have just a set due date for everything. So okay. then if you know, like certain kids are not going to be able to handle the same reading passage on their checklist, that reading passage may be, shorter or different everybody's still getting that same content but on a different level now the problem with that is though is the planning up front because mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you have to have all those and it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate like content wise grade level wise yes and carrying both the gen ed side and um the special ed side so <laughs> you have a lot on your plate so i think that you're doing a really good job Thank you. You're a mom. So like, you know what I mean? Like you are legitimately 
carrying a lot of different bags. So, um, but that might be something like that you could kind of think more for second semester and give your self time to plan so that you can have those activities structured and those checklists or however you want to work it so that the kids already have those assignments and then you can pull and do small groups or you can just check and see where everybody is at the time. But we can talk more about that too later. Like, cause I don't, I definitely don't want to add more. Like I, my goal is just to give you things to make it easier and for like, the content for the kids to get the content, right? That's the ultimate goal is for them to get the content. So, um, but I do think that this lesson was really good. I th just think maybe you had the two different ones that overwhelmed you in trying to make sure everybody was working. Yes. And then um, with the video that you saw, that was my sixth grade class. So I wasn't, yeah. So, and I'm not, um, they're new, you know, right. so I'm not too familiar with what their abilities are outside of like me teaching them for about probably about three or four weeks um, prior to making that video. So but I would like some type of um, structure or system that's going right. to be put into place to where I can just pull and like, oh, this will match, you know, right. um, John's ability or, you know, or Sarah right. or something like that. Yeah, right. that would be wonderful. Right. Yeah. And then um, I do think like, so you have a planning period, right? Yes. Okay. So you're planning for sixth and eighth. No. So uh, right now I'm strictly eighth grade. They, oh, needed, okay. they needed a, um, we're short staffed at my school extremely. So they need an eighth grade teacher. So I was like, I'll, you know, I'll right. volunteer. I'll do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have a planning period. Um, and we do PLCs Mondays and Wednesdays typically. Right. It's not like set in stone. And so mm -hmm. during that time, I'm still trying to familiarize myself with the the content for right. um for eighth grade so right. i'm it's I, i'm just really and then eighth grade does things totally different from the previous grades that i've taught so it's just trying to get the flow and their system together. right, it's, right. It's dealing with eighth grade kids is totally different than like a sixth grade kid so this lesson that we saw like it's it, it would, yeah, it would not, um, it would not fit at all for, yeah, for, right. for my eighth graders. But my, I think when I did it, my, my sixth graders, they, they did pretty, pretty well with it. I've been doing some little closed reading, um, reading, um, comprehension activities with my eighth grade. And surprisingly, they really like took to it and we oh, read wow. aloud, yeah, as a class. Yeah. And that's why I, that was my reaction too. Like, okay, right. <laughs> you guys are really like, you know, into this. So I'm taking little bits and pieces of like the two weeks that I've been there trying to, I guess, structure something to keep them um, right. on task because they're, they're just, I don't know, eighth grade, just like, where's high yeah, school? Yeah. I'm just, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Right. So. Yeah, no, I know. I have an eighth grade son, so I I feel that all the way. Yeah. Around. So do you have like? Do you do like a bell ringer with them? Like, do they have kind of like? Yeah. So I always do like a so a bell ringer being like a do now mm -hmm. kind of. So yes, I always open up my um my lesson with a do now. When you saw the recording, um. I just, we, I think we did that, but then the, uh, the recording has to be like 30 minutes. So I just try to right. get the activity in there, but, um, I do ed puzzles a lot. Oh, yes. and I, yeah. And I find that, um, my students, they'll say that sometimes they're easy, but a lot of them, sixth and eighth grade, a lot of them like it. So, right. Um, I try to keep with that, but I get bored with it sometimes. <laughs> so I'm right. like, if I'm getting bored and I, I mean, just sitting there listening to a video and right. answering the questions, I need to make things a little bit more, um, just interesting right. to, you know, because if it's not interesting at the beginning, why would I expect you to be interested in the middle and the end? Right, right. Exactly. I agree. And I do think like supplementing sometimes with those is always good just to change things up. Yeah. And it's like they know the expectation from the Ed Puzzles because they're used to using them. Mm -hmm. so I do think that that's a good tool to like keep in your arsenal. 
So I, I think that's a great idea. And I love like the do now, just because like when they come in, like they know what they're supposed to be doing and kind right. of every, and it gives you time to like take role and like deal with any kind of outside issues that are walking into the room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think that's great. Okay. I like how you said that too, because that is my life at school. Outside issues walking into the room. <laughs> right. That's, I mean, that's it. That is essentially middle school. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. It is. It's the start to the finish. Okay. So let's go to standard six. Okay. Um, yeah. So like it was very clear as to who was in what group because they got the directions and all of that. So that was very planned out like in advance. And they obviously responded to that because there was no like, where am I supposed to go? I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. That was good. The more you can like do on the front end and the like the fewer questions they can ask because you know they're going to try to find a question to keep themselves off task. So exactly. the fewer questions you give them to ask, that, that's always going to be um, a positive. And then a uh, positive learning environment, that's standard seven. Remember, this, this was the one that I was blown away. Oh, like, yeah. it was, yes, it was, you were patient. <laughs> like it was, they never ruffled your feathers. It was, it was, I was so impressed. Thank so like, you. They were being silly in the background and you were talking to somebody and guiding them and you would turn around and you'd say, okay, you guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it was awesome. I was very proud of that. And then the academically challenging part. Um, and this really, to me, like it falls on the kids because the, at, especially at this age, they've got to take ownership of their own. <laughs> And like start to self advocate or, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. there, there should not be any more handholding because it's, you know, like, especially with eighth graders now. And we said that that would be different in this environment because they're going to know what to do and like have the independence to do it. It's just the want to is what's going to come into. Right. Play with and them. That's, that's the, yeah. Just getting them um, motivated is so you know and even like in the past if i've had like interesting or you know if i've, right. I've had the buy-in you know up front it's still somewhere along the way it still falls off with somebody so right. I, I i can put it on the student but i also put it on me because i'm like well i'm developing the content i'm teaching right. it, so i need to find some way i want my students to be able to leave my classroom like oh my god like that was right an awesome class and i really understand what miss hikes was talking about so i'm trying to I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm trying. That is my goal is to right. get there. And I remember where I was with my um, my seventh grade social studies teacher. I absolutely loved him. And I'm, you know, right. I'm much older now, but, you know, I still remember his lessons. And I'm just like, oh, my God, he was just a fantastic teacher. Right. And I want my students to feel like that with me in the stuff that I teach. Right. Right. Yeah. No. And I love that you said that because like that definitely means that your heart is in the right place because it's for yeah. the kids. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like all the content stuff, that's definitely going to come because like okay. your heart's in the right place. Okay. And especially too, like we have to give ourselves grace because you just got moved into a new spot. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and two weeks in and you're dealing with sick children. So you're like literally like a superwoman. So that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think now next, like you're, Georgia Southern professor is going to do like your next observation and then I'll do the fourth one. Okay. So, um, yeah, but if you need me at any point in time in between like the two, just to kind of like bounce an idea off of me or vent, you know what I mean? Cause that could be possible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm totally open to that and I would love that. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that, that, that's great. Cause I was going to ask like, if I could just, um, like it would be about work, but just oh, yeah. not specifically like, hey, let's meet to talk about assignments. But yeah, right. something. Yes, you know, no, yeah, totally. Like, yeah, we got to lean on each other, girl. Or it's right. Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. yes, for sure. Okay. Exactly. Well, thank you. I hope everybody feels better and that you, you feel better and everything's back to normal soon. Yes, thank you so much. I All really right. appreciate you, Ginger. All right. I appreciate you too. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Right. Bye.